The level of fear that he inspired in others was insane. Well, I was terrified out there. Were you really? Yeah. You just got MJ? Yeah. These are the times Michael Jordan humiliated his opponents. The stuff that I saw when I was in college on TV is just like really real. And what Jordan did to Alonzo Mourning should get him locked up for attempted murder. Pippen gets it to Jordan. Michael challenges and slams. And look at me. Look at this. Tongue out over Alonzo Mourning. Yes! Wayne, he smelled it coming and he still couldn't stop him. Damn. This man Jordan is a psychopath. I mean, the man once humiliated a kid just to prove that he was the GOAT. Yeah, this is OJ Mayo, and in 2006, he was the number one ranked high school player in all of America. So, being the talented kid he was, OJ was personally invited to Michael Jordan's flight school, a basketball camp where kids can learn straight from the GOAT. Yo, it's the Michael Jordan flight school. Learn how to increase your hang time. Learn how to dazzle defenses. Learn how to wear really great sneakers. And what kid would decline that? This was like a dream come true for OJ. So he packed up his bags and flew out to Cali, ready to learn from the greatest. But little did OJ know, this camp would turn into his worst nightmare. You know, I'm playing in my, uh, my camp against OJ Mayo. He was a top high school kid coming out. In front of my camp, he starts this thing about, you can't guard me, you can't do this. You know, I got my campus here, so I obviously I can't really go where I want to go because of my camp. And then, uh. He said, okay, now let me handle my business. And he looked me in my face and said, I'm like, what you mean? So he said, I need all the campers, everybody to leave, let's clear the gym. From this point on, it's a lesson. And from that point on, it was a lesson. He never won a game, I posted him up, I did everything. Hit the famous fadeaway on me and then, uh, and then he said, hey, young fella, let me tell you something. You may be the best high school player, but I'm the best player in the world. Jordan, the, the kid can't even drive yet. What the hell? But look, OJ got off easy compared to most NBA players. Cause Michael Jordan has been humiliating the same NBA player for 40 years straight. And it all started back in college. It was March 29th, 1982. Michael Jordan versus Patrick Ewing for the NCAA championship. And with MJ down one, with just 17 seconds left, he gets the ball and makes history. Jordan's title winning shot not only sent Ewing home, but it also marked the beginning of a lifetime of humiliation. Because once they both made it to the NBA, Jordan took every chance he could get to make Patrick Ewing his Bitch, monster blocks, screaming in his face, five straight playoff knockouts, five. And to top it all off, in 1991, Jordan hit Ewing with one of the most embarrassing poster dunks in NBA history. Play, folks. But it's all good though, because in 2002, Ewing retired from the NBA and finally escaped Jordan's wrath. Or at least that's what he thought. He's been talking trash from the first day that I met him, and he still continued to talk trash, telling me that I, that I have never beaten him when he counts. I mean, you guys met as high school recruits. Right. That's a long time. That's decades and decades of trash talk, Patrick. Oh, yes, and it, it still hasn't stopped. Even today, if I, if I call him right now, he'll, he'll still be talking trash to me. Patrick Ewing didn't even do anything to Jordan, and he still got humiliated. But uh, I can't say the same for Reggie Miller, because as a rookie, he made the biggest mistake of his life, disrespecting Michael Jordan. See, in 1987, during Reggie's first year in the NBA, he played Jordan's Bulls in a preseason matchup. And early in the game, Reggie went off, scoring 10 points over Jordan and locking him up so bad that by the end of the half, Jordan only had four points. Four. So, a little Reggie was feeling himself, thinking he was the GOAT, and thought it'd be a good idea to shit talk Michael Jordan. My rookie year, uh -huh. we were playing the Chicago Bulls, and this is Michael Jordan's third or fourth year in. And Chuck Person, who's on my team, who's a trash talker as well, is like, can you believe Michael Jordan? The guy everyone's talking about, who's supposed to be able to walk on water, you're out here killing him, Reg. This is in the first half. He's <laughs> like, you should be talking to him. He's like, you know, you're right, Michael. Who do you think you are? 
the great Michael Jordan. That's right, there's a new kid on town, right? Kind of looks at me and starts shaking his head. So at half, I have 10 and he has four points, right? I'm doing all this talking. He's like, okay. End of the game in the second half, he ended up with 44. <laughs> and I ended up with 12. <laughs> And as he's walking off, he's like, be sure and be careful. You never talk to black Jesus like that. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, black Jesus. I'm so sorry. Did you ever do it again? Never to Michael Jordan. Never to Michael. You know, I think Reggie learned a valuable lesson. This man Jordan is downright petty. Like one time, he came out of retirement just to humiliate this NBA player. Yeah. Back in 1999, most players were thanking God they didn't have to face Jordan anymore. But there was one man who felt different. Bulls guard, Corey Benjamin. Yo, who the f*** is this? Man, I, I don't know. But the guy told the media, I'm sorry Mike retired, because <laughs> I was looking forward to beating him one on one. But luckily, Jordan didn't even know what a Corey Benjamin was. So he ignored it and went back to enjoying his tequila and cigars. But over the next few months, Corey started trashing Mike's name, telling his teammates that Jordan was overrated, washed up. He couldn't beat him one on one. This Corey Benjamin dude was just asking to die. And during a Bulls practice, he dug his own grave when he stole a teammate's cell phone, called up Jordan, and said this. Hey, you know, I say a little bit too much. What you say? What you say? What you say? I, I can get you. And he said, what? I said, yeah, I want that. He said, all right, I'll be at your practice Monday morning. I'm like, yeah, right. Man, we flew back to Chicago. We broke practice. Bulls on three, Bulls. Guess who walked in the door? Ow. MJ walked in the door, Chris. <laughs> I then and took a dump of myself. Yeah, he done f***ed up. And it was at this practice that Corey Benjamin was buried alive. <laughs> This man Jordan is messed up in the head. He has no limit. I mean, he'll even humiliate the people he loves most. See, in the 90s, there was one player that Jordan did everything with, Charles Barkley. Yeah, the two were best friends. But in 1993, everything changed. Because when they met in the NBA Finals, Jordan did something downright dirty right before game four. He invited Charles Barkley to a round of golf where he gifted him $20,000 diamond earrings. And that sounds nice, but it was all a part of Jordan's secret plan to butter Charles up and f him. Cause Jordan later told his assistant coach his true motive, saying, Charles won't get in my way the rest of the series. What's 20,000 to me? He thinks we're great friends. I hate that fat f Damn, that's evil. But hey, it worked. Cause the very next game, Jordan humiliated Barkley in front of the whole world. Seven second disparity between the shot clock and the game clock. That night, Jordan grabbed the dub by dropping 55 points. And just a few days later, he sent Barkley home and won his third ring. Jordan, how you gonna do your friend like that, dog? Damn, that's ruthless. But if we're talking ruthless, you gotta talk about what Jordan did to the Kimbe Mutumba. Cause MJ hit him with the most embarrassing poster dunk of his NBA career. See, in the 90s, Jordan was dominating the league dunking on everyone. Well, everyone except one player. Seven foot two monster, Dikembe Mutumba. And it's knocked away by Mutumba. 
Matumbo. Running hook, blocked by Matumbo. Morning, blocked by Dikembe. It's a jam his way. A can against Matumbo, and Dikembe says no. No, no, no. And so, no matter how hard Jordan tried, he couldn't land a single dunk on Mutumbo's gigantic ass. So in 1997, Dikembe rubbed it in. Mike, come on, man. Dikembe. Be for real, you haven't got me yet. Mike, Dikembe. Dikembe. don't even try it. You want me to go call Scotty? You have to call Scotty. I haven't got you recently. Yeah, I agree with no, that. No, you haven't got me in the six years. One, two, three, just go ahead and say it. No. Never. He said, I'll get you one day. No. <laughs> he never dunked on you. He never Face put you on the highlight. No. no. He said, I would love to have you in my poster, but it's not happening. It's not going to happen. He's lying. He's lying. lying. It's never going to happen. Oh, man. Right. Yeah, Jakembe was talking shit, and he really thought Jordan would never dunk on him. But a couple of months later, when the two squared off in the playoffs, Jordan got his revenge. Get out, Michael, get a for the fresh MJ. Oh, he did it! Hey, Michael shakes the finger, but he finally got his dunk on Mount Matumbo. He never dunked on you. He never Face put you on the me. highlight. No, no. He said, I would love to have you in my poster, but it's not happening. <laughs> not only did Jordan hit Dikembe with the most humiliating poster dunk of his career, but he also eliminated him from the playoffs in the same game. Embarrassing. But hey, it's still not as bad as what happened to Isaiah Thomas, because Jordan did him the dirtiest, and it ruined the man's entire legacy. See, in the late 80s, Jordan hated Isaiah Thomas, because his Pistons knocked him out of the playoffs three seasons in a row and clowned his ass with plays like this. 10 25 go opening quarter. Uh oh, it's a fight right there. Land there is Jordan. But despite all the L's, Jordan made sure to shake Isaiah's hand after every single loss. Now, that's respect. But in 1991, shit hit the fan. Because during their fourth straight playoff matchup, Jordan's Bulls were just eight seconds away from finally eliminating the Pistons when Isaiah Thomas did the unthinkable, walked off the court, left MJ hanging. Two years in a row, we shook their hands when they beat us. There was a certain respect to the game that we paid to them. That's sportsmanship. No matter how much it hurts, and believe me, it fucking hurt, there's no way you can convince me he wasn't an asshole. You could see it in Jordan's eyes. He was furious. And from this point forward, Jordan knew that he wanted cold-blooded revenge. So over the next few months, Jordan started scheming until he came up with a devious plan. Get Isaiah banned from the most legendary squad ever, the 1992 Olympic Dream Team. See, Jordan being the best player of all time, knew that Team USA would do anything for him. So during a recruiting call with the Olympic Committee, Jordan agreed to play, but with just one little condition. And they called me to ask me to play. Rob couldn't call me to see Rob. I won't play because I did Thomas on the team. Yeah, that was leaked audio, proving Jordan got Isaiah banned from the Dream Team, costing him a gold medal and a place in basketball history, all over a handshake. And Isaiah still regrets it to this day. Looking back on it, shit, we had been bigger, yeah. This man Jordan has humiliated everyone, but there's only one NBA player that's ever made him regret it. Kobe Bryant. See, during Jordan's final season in the NBA, he led the Wizards to a one-point win over Kobe's Lakers. But instead of just taking the dub and moving on, Jordan wanted to rub it in Kobe's face one last time. So after the game, he walked up to Kobe, looked him dead in the eyes, and said, you can put my shoes on all you want, but you're never gonna fill them. Yeah, Kobe got humiliated by his idol. And all he could think about was getting back at Jordan. So Kobe locked himself in the gym, stopped talking to his own teammates, and did nothing but practice. Until March of 2003, when during their final matchup ever, Kobe Bryant put Michael Jordan in his place. Comcast Sportsnet tonight, 
Kobe's first jumper, that's good. Long jumper, three-pointer, Kobe Bryant, he is unbelievable. They trail now by one, here's his jumper, and that's the first lead of the night for Los Angeles. Unbelievable. Another three for Kobe. Kobe guarded by Lou. Kobe's long jumper. Oh, no! He is burning down the house! Standing O. That night, Kobe dropped 42 points in the first half alone. By the end of the night, he scored 55 on Jordan, marking this game as the passing of the torch from one goat to another. Damn, that's some beautiful shit, man. But you know what's even more beautiful? This video right here. These are the top 20 plays of Steph Curry's career. And this man has done it all. He set unbreakable records, embarrassed NBA legends. I mean, he's Steph Curry. So what are you doing? This video's over, man. Click it.